A few weeks ago, we got the chance to play Sonic Frontiers early at PAX. We then came home and made a video about that in which Laura put her foot in it and promised you guys a review. Yep, so make sure that you tune in here again because we'll definitely review it. We haven't talked about it, but we're going to review it, right? Okay, we're reviewing it. And, well, um, here we are. We know it's a little bit late. November's just been super hectic with game releases. Our reviews aren't over yet for this month. But, you know, as fast as Sonic is, it's a little bit late sometimes. That's okay. So at PAX we played the game on a really beefy PC setup because obviously Sega wanted to make a good impression but when it came to actually buying the game we got it on the Switch obviously but we really regret it. So we usually like to start our reviews with the positives. There's enough negativity in the world, you know, we're, we're pretty happy-go-lucky people, right? But this time we kind of don't have a choice, we gotta go with the negative straight up because we'd be banging on about how good this is or how fun that is and you guys would just be watching this footage and be like, uh, what? So screw it, we're gonna start with the negatives today and that's not to say that there isn't any positives about this game, we are genuinely having a really good time but it does have some really serious performance issues. Unlike me. Too much information? <laughs> Sorry. Sounds like you're overcompensating for something. <laughs> so the best way is to just show you, right? Look at these flowers. What the hell is going on here? Is Sonic just making them bloom or something? Has he now got magical flower powers? Has he always had magical flower powers? And I've just never noticed. Yeah, so it's definitely the pop and that's by far the biggest performance issue here. As we continue to put our captured footage over this video, you'll just see how prevalent it is. Like, it is actually freaking everywhere. Usually it is pretty easy for me to look past these things, but the sheer amount of it in this case just makes it so hard. Ah, uh, but Laura, it's not just the pop in that's the issue, it's also the pop out. Oh yeah, look at these lovely piles of stones, Ooh. just like everyone makes at the beach. Really? Oh my god, where did they go? Come on, Sega. They look nice. They help to fill out the landscape. But if you can't figure out how to make a pile of rocks function like a pile of rocks, then maybe just don't include them. We don't need the rocks. But seriously, the game does look really pretty. Pretty bad. <laughs> it's such a shame because one of the things that I was personally most impressed about with our preview at PAX was how beautiful Frontiers looked. There was reflections in the water, you could see the individual leaves on all of the trees, and none of that has been translated to this version. Everything just looks so flat and grainy, almost like there's some sort of weird filter on it. The grass looks blocky when it's not popping in and out. <sighs> Can you tell I'm a little upset? Yep. So here I was just trying to get a nice view of the world, you know, and then what the hell does Sonic think he's doing? Is he like horny or something? Don't dogs do this when they're horny? I don't know, man, but it was weird. He just completely ruined my shot. <laughs> Thanks, dude. So rude. I know. So I just want to remind everyone that we're solely talking about the Switch version here. We can't comment on the PS5 or the PC performance of the game. We wish we had enough disposable income to buy a second copy, because believe me, we would. But while we're on performance... <laughs> I would just like to talk about the frame rates. We don't have any fancy programs to determine this for sure, but using the power of our eyes, in my highly evolved brain, ow. we found exactly zero frame rate dips. As far as we can tell, this runs at a pretty smooth 30 FPS the whole time. Sure, it's an ugly 30, but considering the speed factor of Sonic, it's very appreciated that this is consistent. Yeah, you've got to commend them for that at least. Our Switch users are pretty accustomed to some frame rate fluctuations, so it's pretty nice that it's consistent here. Now we are almost onto the good things, so bear with us through this one last negative. Sonic is pretty hard to control. 
I'm pretty sure the camera angles have a lot to do with it at times, but especially in the first few hours, I was like, dude, this game. Sometimes it feels like you just lose control of the blue blur. Sure, neither of us have very much experience with Sonic titles, but is that an excuse? You shouldn't have to pay decades worth of games to learn control. You know when a car is going real fast and it can take like a few hundred meters to stop? It kind of feels like that. Thankfully though, we no longer notice any of the jankiness because I guess we just got used to it. So just push through the first few hours and you'll be right. Okay, that was exhausting, but we're finally through all the negatives. Can only go up from here, right? No, no, no it actually does do all these game breaking glitches mean that Sonic Frontiers is a bad game? Absolutely not. So firstly, I've got to give you a little bit of background information on mine and Sonic's relationship. We went on a few dates, fooled around for a bit, you know, kind of tested the waters, but ultimately we're just totally different people and we decided it would be for the best to just part ways with mutual respect, of course. And it has absolutely nothing to do with his performance issues, by the way. It's a very real issue that a lot of men struggle with and there is definitely no judgment from me. Look, what I'm trying to say is that I just don't like Sonic games. There's something about his speedy platforming. It's just, it's just not really my style. But guess what, guys? I freaking love Sonic Frontiers. He's done it. Sonic has finally won me over. He rocked up on my doorstep, got on his knees with a dozen roses and was like, take me back. And I did. We're together now. Aw. Yeah, it's cute. Didn't want to talk to me about it. Um. Despite all of its issues, Frontiers is easily the most fun that we've ever had with a Sonic title. Excuse me for yet another poor relationship metaphor, but as long as you've got a good heart and good intentions and you're willing to try something new, nothing else matters. You'll find love eventually. Sonic Frontiers feels like it's tailor-made for us. It does so much right that I can easily overlook all of its flaws and it does have a lot of flaws, which means that it does a lot right. So as someone who's not a fan of Sonic, I'm still not a fan of the portals or the cyberspace sections. Ironically, this is probably where the game struggles the least. It's also what a lot of people are gonna like the most, especially if you're a long time fan. But yeah, not my jam. I am never going to get an S tier time and I'm happy with that. Clear and concise platforming all the way, baby. The game drops you straight into one of these cyberspace levels. Then I did the part we already played at PAX, followed by yet another cyberspace. So I did have to push through, but boy, am I glad I did because boom, open world. Well, it's not exactly open world, they're like open zones. Basically multiple open areas that aren't connected, but you know what, it's close enough. It's also here that we start the comparisons to my favorite game of all time. Sega can say that this game isn't like Breath of the Wilds all they want, but they're just wrong. Straight up, the worlds are super reminiscent of Zelda environments, but that's just the obvious one. You've also got the upgrade system for your speed and ring capacity instead of, you know, stamina and health. And just like in Zelda, it's a really good way of being able to tackle progressively harder challenges. Plus, these little Coco guys are so cute. While the portals aren't exactly what Breath of the Wild shrines offer, there is definitely a link that can be drawn there too. And the funniest comparison is that there is even a version of the Blood Moon where all the enemies respawn into the world. It's some kind of meteor shower with an unnecessary slot machine mechanic that we didn't really use, but hey, looks nice. Just like you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Brody points made up for dating Sonic. <laughs> Our most favorite comparison though is the puzzles. We freaking love the amount of puzzles in this game. Every time you want to unlock a new section of the map, you've got to do a little puzzle. We found ourselves just setting waypoints straight to the next one. They're really not that tough, but sticking to a common theme here, they're just really fun. Yeah, I reckon the puzzles are my favorite thing about this game, and there is definitely no shortage of them. A lot of like the mini area boss things are also pretty puzzle-like. Like you can't just wail on them any which way and expect them to go down. You've got to like figure out how to take them down. And it's just so much more interesting when it's done like that. 
These bosses are kind of like the Talus or the Hinox equivalents if we're still on that Breath of the Wild train. But they're also pretty reminiscent of the Shadow of Colossus bosses with just how huge some of them are. So yeah, definitely reminds me of that game a lot. The other thing that we both really like about this game is its RPG elements. We already mentioned the speed leveling system, but there's also a load of other collectibles that can be used to increase Sonic's power and defensive stats. Again, being a great way to allow us as players to take on stronger enemies across the zones. And the most obvious RPG element, the skill tree, is also here. We've heard mixed opinions on the skill tree, but there are so many moves and combos to start with that we were already overwhelmed. Can you imagine if all the rest of the moves were there too? It would have been way too much. The skill tree is definitely necessary. Now to the platforming. Apart from the obvious cyberspace levels, the world is absolutely jam-packed with little platforming puzzles and challenges. Again with the puzzles, man, how good. It's so satisfying to just jump on a grind rail, do a little 2.5D section, and then go straight back into exploring. I'm still not a huge fan of the auto sequences where the game kind of takes over for you and makes you go a certain speed. But for the most part, the platforming is a huge win and is really enjoyable. Sonic Frontiers is a 3D platformer at its core, so it would leave a lot to be desired if those aspects sucked. But to be fair, if somebody wanted to call Frontiers an action adventure or an RPG, then you couldn't really tell them that they were wrong. And that's what we love about this game. It really tries something new. It pushes the boundaries of what people perceive to be a Sonic game. And that is awesome. I'm literally proof that this game is opening up Sonic to a whole new audience. People that might not have been a big fan of the series beforehand. And not to mention that whole new legion of fans that have been exposed to Sonic through the movies and other media sources. There are a number of other things the game does right, like the story and the epic supersonic boss fights, but we really just have to bring up the music for a second because this soundtrack is an absolute banger. Which honestly shouldn't surprise me because Sonic always has great music, but nonetheless. Yeah, so you get these really upbeat EDM songs and the portals, which again is pretty classic Sonic, but each level is so unique and can draw from a number of different genres, including pop, dubstep, even rock. But the best part about these songs is that they are perfectly offset by the relaxing exploration music that you'll find in the open zones. I'm a big fan of the Desert Islands one personally, but they're all a perfect backdrop to just discover things. And I know I sound like a broken record, but a lot of these give off some pretty heavy Breath of the Wild vibes. And then finally, during the boss battles, you get your middle with some truly crushing riffs on eight string guitars. Yep, these are some of my favorite tracks for sure. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all, but yeah, they also perfectly work to set the tone for what's going on in the game. Okay, so Sonic Frontiers has its problems, but don't we all? I know I do. I know I do. Nah, Laura doesn't, she's perfect. <laughs> Brownie points! <laughs> the bottom line is that this game is just really, really fun. The asset pop-in on Switch almost becomes part of that, to be honest. Like in this part here, I was like, hmm, I'm sure I can get across this ravine somehow. And then, boom, in comes the platforms. It's almost like extra little puzzles, you know? No, but in all seriousness, there is finally a Sonic title that I wholeheartedly enjoy. And I'm sure there are longtime fans that are even more excited than we are because they have been waiting a long time for a good 3D Sonic. Can we recommend it on the Switch? Probably not. If you have the opportunity to play it on literally any other console, then take it. It was released like everywhere, but are you not going to enjoy it because you get it on the Switch and it's your only option? No, I think we've made it pretty clear that Sonic Frontiers is a great game regardless. We're playing it on the Switch and we really love it. Thank you guys so much for sticking it out till the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. Maybe leave a comment. Are you picking Frontiers up or is the pop-in just a little bit too much for you? Fair enough if it is. We'll be back next week with our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet reviews, so look forward to that. But for now, we're going to go celebrate my birthday. So, boost out. Miso. Miso's not perfect. He's standing on our PS5. That's 
not ideal. 